how to calculate a two-way ANOVA. A two-way ANOVA is a statistical method used to test the effect of two categorical variables on a continuous variable. The categorical variables are the independent variables, for example, the variable drug type with drug A and B, and gender with female and male. And the continuous variable is the dependent variable, for example, the reduction in blood pressure. So, we would like to know if drug type and gender have an influence on the reduction in blood pressure. Drug type has the two levels drug A and B, and gender has the two levels male and female. To answer the question, we collect data. We randomly assigned patients to the treatment combinations and measured the reduction in blood pressure after a month. For example, the first patient receives drug A, is male, and after one month a reduction in blood pressure of 6 was measured. Now let us answer the questions. Is there a main effect of drug type on the reduction in blood pressure? Is there a main effect of gender on the reduction in blood pressure? And is there an interaction effect between drug type and gender on the reduction? But what does an analysis of variance actually do? And why is the word variance in analysis of variance? In a two-way analysis of variance, the total variance of the dependent variable is divided into the variance that can be explained by factor A, the variance that can be explained by factor B, the variance of the interaction and the error variance. Actually, SS is not the variance, but the sum of squares. We will discuss how to calculate the variance in this case in a moment. But how can I imagine that? The dependent variable has some variance. In our example, not everyone will have the same reduction in blood pressure. We now want to know if we can explain some of this variance by the variables drug type, gender and their interaction. The part that we cannot explain by these three terms accumulates in the error. If the result looked like this, we would be able to explain almost all the variance by factors A and B and their interaction. And we would only have a very small proportion that could not be explained. In this case, it would be the other way around. Drug type, gender and the interaction almost have no effect on the reduction in blood pressure and it all adds up in the error. But how do we calculate the sum of squares, the F value and the P value? Here we have our data, once drug type with drug A and B and once gender with male and female. So these individuals are for example all male and have been given drug A. First we calculate the mean values we need. We calculate the mean value of each group, so male and drug A, that is 5.8, then male and drug B, that is 5.4, and we do the same for female. Then we calculate the mean value of all males and females and the mean value of drug A and B. Finally, we need the total mean. We can now start to calculate the sum of squares. Let's start with the total sum of squares. We do this by subtracting the total mean from each individual value, squaring the result and adding up all the values. The total mean is 5.4, so we calculate 6 minus 5.4 squared plus 4 minus 5.4 squared to finally 3 minus 5.4 squared. So we get a sum of squares of 84.8. The degrees of freedom are given by n times p times q minus 1. n is the number of people in a group, in our case 5, and p and q are the number of categories in each of the factors. In both cases we have two groups. The total variance is calculated by dividing the sum of squares by the degrees of freedom. So we get 4.46. Now we can calculate the sum of squares between the groups. For this we calculate the group mean minus the total mean. 
So 5.8 minus 5.4 squared plus 5.4 minus 5.4 squared and the same for these two values. We get 7.6. In this case, the degrees of freedom are 3, which gives us a variance of 2.53. Now we can calculate the sum of squares of factor A. A dash is the mean value of the categories of factor A. So we calculate 5.9 minus the total mean value and 4.9 minus the total mean value. This results in 5. Together with the degrees of freedom, we can now calculate the variance for factor A, which is 5. We do the same for factor B. In this case, we use the mean values of male and female and we get the variance of 0.8. Now we can calculate the sum of squares for the interaction. We obtain this by calculating the sum of squares minus the sum of squares of A and B. The degrees of freedom result to 1. For the interaction we get a variance of 1.8. Finally we can calculate the sum of squares of the error. We subtract the mean value of each group from the respective group values. So in this group we subtract 5.8 from each individual value. In this group we subtract 5.4, here we subtract 6 and then we subtract 4.4. This gives us a sum of squares of 77.2. The degrees of freedom are 16 and we get a variance of 4.83. And now we calculate the f values. These are obtained by dividing the variance of factor A, B or the interaction by the error variance. So we get the f value for factor A by dividing the variance of factor A by the error variance which is equal to 1.04. We can now do exactly the same for fb and fab. To verify we get exactly the same values with data tab 1.04, 0.17 and 0.37. For the calculation of the p-value you need the degrees of freedom and the f-distribution. So with these three values you can either read the critical p-value in a table or as usual you just use a software to calculate the p-values. You can find a table of critical F values on data tab. E.g. for a significance level of 5% you can use this table. If the red value is greater than the calculated F value, the null hypothesis is rejected, otherwise not. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.